Hi everyone, this is Amber with the Chakra Diva and I am super excited that you are here in the new, brand spanking new, um, Chakra community where you know there are lots of people who are like-minded just like you who are here to get a better understanding of themselves and go within themselves, learn how to communicate with spirit so that you can be on the right track that you're supposed to do in this life, in this world, um, in this moment really. So. I've started off um, the program on the solar plexus chakra, and there is definitely a reason why, and it actually just lined up that way, synchronicity, even though I didn't, um, I didn't plan it, it just came up. So anyhow, your solar plexus chakra is located in between your rib cage and below your uh, breastbone, and it's supposed to shine this vibrating, amazing yellow brightness, right? Kind of like the sun. We call it the fire aspect in food and spirit. So here is where your ego lies, your purpose, your life path, um, your confidence, your self-esteem, all of these things, your ego lies within this energy center. And when it's balanced, you have a good direction and sense of where you're going in life and um, who you are and what you're here to do. And when it's imbalanced, we will go over those, um, the overactive, you know, like the, the egotistical person who is very high up in their head and thinks that they're almighty. And then you have the underactive side, which um, is not very confident in themselves and thinks low of themselves. All right, that's more on the underactive side. So the objective is to get it balanced, right? I mean, overall, that's, that's what we're here to do. If you want to find your purpose, you would look through this chakra. They work together as a system, meaning one affects the other. So a lot of times I find clients who have solar plexus problems also have throat problems because they're not centered in themselves to speak out for uh, their truth, right? Sometimes they can't make a decision and they go, oh, I really want to do this, but, you know, I would make my boss unhappy if I did that. So I'm, I'm just going to go do this and I'm going to stuff my feelings all down. So I said two key things here. One, they're not speaking out, right? You're not, you're not speaking your truth. You're not honoring yourself where you are at. And two, you're stuffing your feelings down, which goes to the chakra below it, and that's your sacral chakra for emotions. So they do impact one another, as well as um, work together as a system. So we're going to um, work together individually. So we're going to work on it individually and isolate it so that we can shine it up, brighten it up, and let it be all sparkly and cute. Um, you know, like, can you imagine what the world would be like if you had a lot of confidence in yourself? if your self-esteem was brought up, if you felt amazingly beautiful and good about you, you know, what would that do for you? What would that look like? So I want to isolate each of these chakras and also work together on them as a system because once you focus on one, it impacts the others. And you will see how, um, you know, in your own life, how that works and how that improves. So I do have my notes here if you see me like looking over just to make sure I don't skip anything. Um, we did discuss an underactive one. A person can feel powerless, go feeling unnoticed, not valued for their work they have, that they have done at their job, a lack of confidence, self-esteem, and be indecisive or even too hard on themselves. This is an underactive solar plexus chakra. Overactive, when a person is bossy domineering, imposes on other, misuse of personal power, and even could be considered a bully. So you have two um, very big extremes. So for your first task, your first assignment, I should say, I want you to work on your physical appearance to boost up your confidence, right? If you're on the underactive side, this activity is for you. If you don't feel great with who you are, great with your empowerment. Um, we are going to work on your physical appearance first. So let's work on an underactive chakra. What, what does that look like? How does that present itself? A person might be on the defensive side, right? Your arms crossed. Uh 
uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. You know, all right. So that's that's one way when you see people kind of like cover themselves, they're protecting themselves. Oh, I don't know how I feel about this. Okay, I'm hearing you. I'm listening to you, right? But you're really masking up um, the problem. Another underactive chakra, let's see. That would, you know, that my first defense is always like the hands crossing. If you're overactive, you're kind of like hands on your hips in somebody's face. Don't be doing that to me kind of deal, right? Hands on your hips. Um, oh, underactive, a good one would be slouching. Doing your work at the computer. Slouching. La, 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 right? A person with lots of confidence has a straight spine. They're up. They're doing their work with pur purpose, you know, like that's what they want to do. So I want you to notice and take care of um, how you present yourself to others because that's the first clue. When somebody sees you, they are noticing um, what you look like. Are you slouched over all the time? Or are you feeling really good and up and in the air and come on, right? So um, you can also, you know, when you do see yourself doing like this, free yourself. Why am I doing that? What's making this come up that I'm, I'm feeling this way? All right, one of my favorite um, positions that um, my boss used to do. So my boss is like this. This is going back. We're going back eight, ten years. My boss was this uh, six-foot tall man, right? Very thin, slender, tall guy, uh, very direct, knew exactly what he wanted. And my favorite pose that I would see him in, right, when he, like, he was going in for the punch and he knew he was going to get this contract, he would stand up and do, like, a Peter Pan move where he had his um, hands, like, right on below your hips, kind of like, not above your hips like us women do, okay, not above your hips when you're yelling at somebody, below your hips, like, kind of on your thighs, right, go look up Peter Pan, and he would take his hands and kind of cuff them around, and he would quack out. Amber, I want you to finish this essay by 2 p.m. And I would say, okay. <laughs> right? But it was my favorite, um, my favorite confident move that I, I watched him. I noticed him do. I called it the Peter Pan move. So if you've ever seen Peter Pan go up to the ledge and he's like, walk, 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 that's the move I'm talking about. So when you're feeling um, insecure and you're feeling, oh, what am I going to do? You're going in for contracts at work. You're talking to your clients. Um, you're talking to your boss, you know, or even on a personal level, you are talking to a family member and you want to achieve something, notice how, what, what your body language is. Notice the message that you are giving out. And the more you pay attention to that during this week, okay, the more it will start building and loosening up the tension in your body, right? You're, you're no longer uh, slouched over and given the vibration of slump. You're given the vibration of amazing and bright, and you got this. So the first assignment is to pay attention to your body language. And um, you can go, you know, start practicing this, or you can look at the next um, video and keep moving on. But that's your first assignment. Thank you. So glad you're here. Many blessings.